In this video, I want to introduce DNA replication as the first part of the central dogma. And I want to talk a little bit about it, just a sort of overview. So DNA replication, this is the process by which we make DNA. So DNA replication is done by DNA polymerase. So DNA polymerase, or DNA Pol as it is abbreviated, does this. It adds DNTPs, right, deoxynucleotide triphosphates, to an existing chain. Now, how does it know? How does DNA polymerase know which base to add? Well, it's going to do that. It's going to add the bases depending on the um, existing. Oops, it's going to add. It's going to add bases that are complementary to the template DNA. So there's already a DNA strand there uh, that it's that the DNA polymerase is acting on. So if there's a T on the existing DNA strand, then polymerase knows to add an A. And if there's a G, it knows to add a C, so on and so forth. So where does this actually begin? Where does DNA replication begin? It begins at what's called an origin of replication. Now, prokaryotes have one origin of replication, whereas eukaryotes have many origins of replication. And this is due to the fact that prokaryotes have a circular DNA, circular genome, whereas eukaryotes have linear DNA. So that looks kind of like this. So this is one origin of replication. That's kind of messy. But um, that this, this is a, a eukaryote here, has many. So this is a prokaryote. And this is in a eukaryote. Many. So DNA replication is bidirectional, right? And this is the, this is because of the strands being anti-parallel. Recall that one strand will be running five prime to three prime, and the other strand will be running five prime to three prime the other way. So the two strands, one will be synthesized one way, and the other will be synthesized the other way. Now how will I know which way one is going and which way the other is going? The synthesis direction is um, 5 prime to 3 prime. And how often does this happen? The simple answer is always. This always happens. Synthesis always occurs 5 prime to 3 prime. So if this is the, the strand is going 5 prime to 3 prime, then I would be adding the, the anti-parallel strand the other way, right? 5 prime to 3 prime. And then for this one, I'd be adding a 5 prime to 3 prime this way. And I'll talk more about that in a, a later video. How does, what is the reaction, the actual reaction that DNA polymerase catalyzes? The reaction that it catalyzes is the action in which we have the 3 prime OH group of an existing strand. It acts as a nucleophile attacking the 5 prime phosphate group of the next DNTP causing a pyrophosphate an inorganic pyrophosphate to hop off uh, so the details of this are in the how to draw nucleic acids video which I've done previously so go ahead and watch that video and check that out for the details behind this reaction so when this pyrophosphate hops off this is the equivalent to two ATP is being used because this pyrophosphate can be hydrolyzed off into two inorganic phosphates. So essentially, um, it's kind of like taking an ATP to an AMP and, and using two high energy phosphate bonds. So here, when this happens, when this nucleophilic attack occurs and the pyrophosphate leaves, there is a covalent bond that is formed. That covalent bond is called a phosphodiester bond. And specifically, since the three prime OH attacked the five attack the 5 prime phosphate, it's a 3 prime, 5 prime phosphodiester bond. And again, the details behind that are in this video. Okay. So, one thing um, that is important to note about DNA polymerase is that it cannot begin, it cannot begin de novo. Now, what de novo means is of nothing. What, is that, what does that mean, right? What does it mean that DNA polymerase cannot begin de novo? D 
DNA polymerase requires an existing 3' OH group to act on, right? This 3' OH that's acting as a nucleophile needs to be present. So how does that happen, right? This is a, this is a problem because if that's the case, then how can DNA polymerase begin if there's no initial, I mean, if it needs a 3' OH group and there isn't already DNA, then how can DNA be synthesized at all? The answer to that question lies with this enzyme here, primase. Primase is an RNA polymerase, uh, a special RNA polymerase, and it lays down this thing called a primer. It's an RNA primer, which is basically just a small strand of RNA. And what that RNA primer does is it provides the 3' OH, this primer here provides the 3' OH for DNA polymerase to act on. So why is it that primase, an RNA polymerase, can lay down a primer? The reason why is because the RNA polymerase can synthesize de novo. Okay, so it's it's a little bit more powerful <laughs> in that sense that it can synthesize de novo while DNA polymerase cannot. So I hope that DNA application overview was helpful and maybe taught you something that you didn't already know. One last thing, I am a tutor. If you live in Southern California, feel free to contact me via email at moofuniversity at gmail.com. And if you want more details, check out the description below. Thank you for watching.